In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, in the uh, Missal, in the, in the order, or the breviary, the liturgy hours, you have the different categories of saints, uh, bishops and, and religious and, and holy women and men, martyrs, of course, taking a prominent place. Of those, not included the book are bridge builders. In Latin, they're bridge builders. They're called pontiffs. Pontiffs refer to two bishops because they're bridge builders in a sense. Um, Holy Father being the supreme bridge builder. But there's another kind of a collection of saints, especially in the early Middle Ages, that were literally bridge builders. Some were hermits or, or, or just men of the town. Others, in one case, was a bishop. They built bridges in that time when the empire had fallen. Bridges between towns. So that people, that commerce could happen. That the cities could expand. And to save lives that people didn't fall into rivers and uh, down precipices. They're bridge builders, and this was seen as a work of mercy and a holy work. And this is what Christ is. In the prayer over the offerings from last night from the Vigil Mass for the Ascension, the prayer is, O God, whose only begotten Son, our High Priest, is seated ever, ever living at your right hand to intercede for us. Grant that we approach with confidence the throne of grace, and there obtain your mercy. While a very accurate translation of the Latin, the word used is pontifex. High priest, when we hear that, it refers to two things. We can think of the high priest of the temple, the high priest of Jerusalem, who was the head of the other priests when offer offered the sacrifices, especially on the greatest feast days, such as the Day of Atonement. And so we get this idea of the high priest from that but also from the Roman world, and that's where Pontifex comes from. If one knows their history, they know that Julius Caesar was Pontifex. He was uh, the supreme pontiff before there was a pope, and that later was adopted by the emperors. Why? He was a political office of one that would then organize the city, but it was also that of a priest. It was an interesting story of its own. But this idea, then, of the divine bridge builder that we see in Christ that's what he is as high priest. Certainly he's priest, altar, sacrifice that we've been reflecting on during the Easter season, offering himself for the sake of the world. But he's also in that sacrifice, in his work of, of being high priest, precisely that, precisely a bridge builder, uniting earth and heaven. He did not ascend then to leave us, but to draw us to him there at the throne of, of the Father and to intercede on our behalf and build this bridge, a spiritual bridge. And Saint, in fact, St. Catherine of Siena, uh, in her dialogue, speaks very much of the bridge, of Christ as the bridge, as the bridge that, that is the safe passage between earth and the kingdom of heaven. In the letter of the Hebrews, it, the, the author speaks of how the Lord remains forever in that priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him since he lives forever to make intercession for them. We often think of intercession as something as a blessing only, as a prayer for blessings from God, but it is also that bridge building. It's a building then through prayer, building a bridge between God and the world. Even in the Roman canon, the, the longer and older Eucharistic prayer, today it has a special insert asking then for, for that power of God, reminding us that the Lord in His ascension ascends to the Father and brings weak humanity to the strength of the throne of God. So we'll pray that in a few moments. And this is the essential part of the ascension. It's not the ascension itself. Even the angels tell them in one version, of the Gospels. Why are you looking up at the sky? Because there's work to be done. And the, and the first work is to be drawn to Christ over the bridge that He is. Thomas says, how can we know the way? And Jesus says, you, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you have seen Me, you have seen the Father. The other aspect is to be, be, be pontiffs ourselves. There's the supreme pontiff, the Pope, the true pontiffs, the bishops, but we, we participate in Christ's priesthood, all of us in a common priesthood. And we too are bridge builders. That we not only bridge the gap between earth and the Father, 
that gap that was not bridged before, as Jesus says in the parable with Lazarus and the rich man, there's an infinite chasm between us. The Lord solves that, and we must travel that road, but we must equally build bridges for others. The bridge of grace, the bridge of intercessory prayer, the bridge of preaching then and witnessing to the power of God to help them cross as well from this earth into that which potentially is prepared for them as well. The wonderful thing is that we can talk about time and, and we are crossing as something we're doing, as something where we look towards eternal life. But there's the other aspect too, that in the descent next week of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes back across that bridge, if you will, travels back to us and gives us that power that belongs at the throne of God, brings us through that power of, the, of Christ at the one end of the bridge over to us in the church, in our humanity, giving us that gift of divine power from the throne of grace. The seat of judgment has become for us the throne of grace, says the letter of Hebrews. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we confidently approach the throne of grace to receive his mercy. And the greatest gift of mercy is not passive or, or, or external, but internal, the very gift of God. The Lord in his mercy sends not only blessings, but he always gives us the gift of himself in the incarnation, in the forgiveness of sins, in the, in the gift of, the, of his presence in the, in the most holy sacrament of the altar, in the gift of the indwelling of the Trinity, and etc. The Lord then, in his mercy, ascends to heaven so that that grace and power might descend to us and we might follow, just as Our Lady did in the Assumption, that we might follow in that mystery of our own uh, going to the Lord in grace now and at the end of the li our life uh, to see God face to face forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.